How's it going? I am Nate Rendone. I own and operate Cosmic Furnace Productions, which is an audio production company in Austin, Texas. My main gig, what I usually do, is music for any kind of visual media. Uh, commercials, do a lot of film, done a couple of games, mostly mobile iPhone games. Uh, I also do sound design and Foley. I do a whole lot of radio IDs and jingles. I get a lot of work recording voiceovers and ADR. Uh, I also produce music for a couple of local artists around town, which is awesome. I love doing that. But yeah, this isn't about me and what I do. I just want to explain what, what this video is about. So a couple of years ago, I was in a band that's currently called The Dead Station. Had a different name back then. Doesn't even matter what they were called back then. And they recently released an EP, actually came out last year, uh, called Episode 1, Like Peering Into the Deepest Ocean Abyss. Uh, back in 2007, 2008, 2009, that area is when I was actually with them, I recorded all of the keyboard parts for that EP. Back then it was an album. Uh, why it turned into an EP, some songs did not fit with the vision of the producers, so stuff got weeded out and eventually became an EP. The recording sessions for that EP were pretty interesting because we didn't have a whole lot of keyboard parts written prior to going in to record. While we were recording, we were writing. The uh, protocol was anytime we got an idea, we needed to record it right then and there so we didn't forget it. So we recorded a whole lot of ideas, a lot of stuff got thrown out, kept a lot of stuff. But where I actually got free reign with the keyboard parts were the keyboard solos. Uh, that's actually what I wanted to go over in this video. And it's, I think it's going to be a, a series of videos where I kind of go over just uh, some of those keyboard parts of the EP and kind of just show you what I was thinking when I was writing those parts or the solo, kind of play through it a little bit, play it slow, play it up to speed tempo just so you can you know, get an idea of it. Show you what uh, my influences were at the time. I could probably link certain phrases to certain musicians pretty simply. Another thing I want to do is actually show you some of those parts that were thrown out. A lot of that stuff was interesting obviously did not fit with the music or the vision that the producers were going for but uh, I think it's always fun to go through that stuff. I, me as a music fan I love hearing things that were thrown out of albums. You know I can't be the only one right? So uh, let's do Subsistence Defined which is on the album episode one by The Dead Station. <laughs> You're going to see a video of me and my handsome face. You're also going to see the actual Logic session. And um, this is actually the session I used back in 2009 when, when, when we were working on this stuff and we were recording it. You could, you, could actually, oof, was that? you could actually see that I don't have a lot of these plugins anymore just because it's, it's an old session. Stuff I haven't even looked at in years. Oh my gosh, Pro 53. I miss this so much. You guys remember Pro 53? Oh, man. That was like a model of um, like an old Prophet 5. It sounded great. Oh, I wish I still had that. Well, whatever. Native Instruments doesn't make it anymore. And then um, you're also going to see a piano roll that's pretty much just going to demonstrate everything that I play on the keyboard. <laughs> That's how it's going to work. So this session here, I have color coded because I'm not quite a stickler for organization, but I'll, I try to be. This right here is a keyboard solo. You'll see there are three different sounds making up the final patch. Um, and one of them is, is muted because uh, I don't have some of the plugins anymore. So it's not going to make a complete sound anyways. I have this muted here. I'll put that back in. Yeah, so this is the keyboard solo. It's 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 a short and sweet solo, only eight bars. I try to make the most out of those eight bars, though. Actually, let's just have a listen to the solo. I have up here the reference track that I used to record to, and here's the mastered final version of it. So let's just have a quick listen to the uh, the final one here. Wow, brick wall, love it. <laughs> The solo can be broken up into two parts, at least that's how I think of it. There's a first part that's a very melodic, tasty, uh, I guess kind of slow moving. And then the second part is the shreddy, fast, kind of in your face part. So uh, let me play the first part for you slow, and then I'll bring it up to speed and I'll kind of explain it a little bit. 
So just without the music, out of the three patches here, I'll be using this Shining Fuzz. I actually used ES1 for that. Huh, cool. I remember for, uh, I think it was this Thor lead. Yeah, I actually used Reason 4 because Reason 4 was brand new when I was working on this and I and I had gotten it from, uh, from school. I went to Berkeley. I just wanted to try and see if I could fit something in from it. And so I used that new Thor synthesizer, which is new with Reason 4. And this is the patch. Yeah, it's dirty. It just adds it just adds grit to the overall sound. And that's what I was going for. Okay, let's get back to this. So here's the first part of the solo. <laughs> Simple enough, I'm gonna do that again. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you'll you be able to see in the piano roll what I'm doing, it's it's very simple. I'm doing some bendy stuff. We're gonna do the bendy! But it's not anything, um, you know, too hard. I don't think it's anything you won't be able to grasp. So I'm actually gonna go right into the second part. So the second part is, uh, and I'll do that slow now. All right, one more time. So what that is, it starts off with the pentatonic line picking up into uh, these two chords. And when I say two, I'm, I say, I mean chord quality. So. When I say chords, I actually mean arpeggios. So these two chord arpeggios. And that I actually stole from Star Trek, who, uh, who composed the music for that. Uh, Dennis McCarthy, the old show, like back in the late 80s and the early 90s, he would do these uh, these two chords played with a French horn. So he'd have like a, you know, an ensemble of French horns playing these two chords. And it sounded so cool. It was an amazing texture. Kind of stole that idea from him. <laughs> of course, I'm not playing chords. I'm arpeggiating it just so I could be a little more shreddy. But uh, yeah, that's why I got it from Dennis McCarthy. <laughs> And then the part after that is the very interesting part. It's a whole series of uh, half step and tritone movements. So let me do that really slow for you. Starts on a B and go down a tritone, down a tritone, up a tritone, up a tritone, up a tritone. And then when you get to that point, you're just going to go down in tritones chromatically, sort of. That's not a completely true statement, but just watch. So that whole section together, slow. Let me try and actually play to it. Let's see what this is gonna sound like. It's been quite a while since I've played to this. I think I used to play this live like over four or five years ago. All right, let's see if I can do this. I'll be playing to the uh, reference track, so you'll get a little sneak peek at what it sounded like before it was mixed and mastered. Oh, I'm trying on the metronome for me. All right, let's give this a go.
Oops, looks like I recorded it. Uh, I'm gonna. There we go. <laughs> that one's better. Cool. Well, I hope you learned something new. Maybe some uh, new and creative ideas. By the way, that last part, uh, the, the the Tritony part, got from a guy named Jem Godfrey. He's in a band called Frost with an asterisk at the end. Frost asterisk. Uh, I heard about them back in 2008. Uh, since then, are my favorite band. He's my favorite producer and my biggest musical influence. So if you haven't heard of Frost or Jem Godfrey, look them up. Amazing, amazing music. All right, so what I want to do now is look at some of the stuff that was actually thrown out, stuff that doesn't really fit with the song now, but uh, so it's still interesting to listen to to me, and I kind of actually, just for nostalgic reasons, want to see what the heck I was able to think of back in 2009. So uh, I'm actually going to highlight everything that was used. So this is the piano stuff. This is the keyboard solo. Here's some uh, little lick that happens in the verses. Strings, patterned strings. So all everything that I highlighted was used. Everything that is not highlighted was not used. So I guess we could just go in order here. Uh, what is this? I named it, looks like modulating synth. Oh, that looks terrible. Ooh. Oh my gosh, look at that. So it's a cluster. All right, let me see what this does. Whoa. I guess that's what that is. Oh, I guess I know why that wasn't used. <laughs> cool sonic textures, but again, not anything to be used here. Uh, let's see what this is. I think I know what this is. This was just a uh, a synth lead doing that main melody at the intro. Very reverby. I don't know what that sounds like with the track. Yeah, so that's all that was, and it was probably, probably couldn't even hear it anyways, probably not even worth keeping in. Uh, moving on, this right here, <laughs> I think I know what this is. I don't have the old guitar rig anymore, so it's not going to be the exact sound that we used. But this right here is distorted, either a distorted trumpet or a distorted horn line, a distorted trombone. I'll solo it, and then I'll play play it with the track. Woo! <laughs> oh man. That might have been a little too too much on the prog slash fusion side for Sean and Ryan, but oh man, that's cool. I okay. can't I love that. Again, very tritony. I was listening to a whole lot of Frost at that point. So uh, you'll hear a lot of that kind of stuff all over this EP. Uh, let's see this. Big FM, so I used FM8, FM synthesis, I'm a big fan of. It's very tinny, but has some good textures to it. Let me just see what this was. Oh, I was just reinforcing the guitar parts. And solo, of course. So this right here, Happens at the uh, last part of the song after the guitar solo. I call that the tag here in my session. Uh, this is a piano part that was taken out, but Sean actually wrote some stuff based on the melodic content of this piano part. Let me play it for you. Oh, 
yeah. Ah, I forgot about that. Oh. Yeah, that's way too shreddy. <laughs> That's like way too prim and proper. That's not fitting with what this song is about. But uh, yeah, there were some. If you listen to the to the mastered version of this, the final version of it, you'll hear some of the stuff that the guitars are doing are, are based off of this piano line. So Sean actually liked the the part. It just, I guess, it's just the sound of it is too pretty. Not really what the song is about. Yeah, and I think that's it. Yeah, so that's all that was taken out. This is, is that synth part. So not a whole lot was taken out, but some stuff just, again, just doesn't fit with the song. And if it doesn't fit, you got to throw it out, you know? So let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm probably going to be posting a couple more videos about Dead Station tunes, uh, some of the parts, maybe some of the patches. I can't really go into depth with the patches because when I delivered all the keyboard parts, I delivered audio and I delivered MIDI. So Sean and Ryan had like all this free reign to mess with the patch as much as they wanted. And in some of the cases, they did. So uh, I, I could tell you what I did for them, and but I, I'm not going to be able to show you exactly what they did because I have no idea what they finally did with the patches. So uh, yeah, I'll be going over parts, definitely over solos and uh any i guess anything else i could think of i definitely want to go over some of the stuff that was left out because i mean again we did a whole lot of recording and you know <laughs> not all of it was used but a lot of it was very interesting so um again let me know what you guys think and uh i'll catch you later take care guys